<laughs> I'm a good, I, I've, uh, I can tell you, the president is a good friend of mine. Uh, the deputy president is also a good friend of mine. Uh, all, I, uh, all I told him, and I will, I will not do, is, I will not disrespect the president. He's the president, he's been a good friend of mine. And uh, I told him, I have supported him in 202. <coughs> When I was even at DC, I supported him in 2013. Uh, I supported him in 2017. I was the first person to wind up my political party. I was the party leader of Newford, Kenya. Mm -hmm. I was the first one to fold up to form Jubilee, even before URP and TNA, which was his party, wound up. And I said, I, I used to joke even in, in, in public rallies that uh, I closed my shop to build a, to build a supermarket. Uh, fortunately, the supermarket went under receivership. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I, I just told him I, I have um, I have tremendous respect and I have worked with him. Uh, even in the Senate, I've served. I've done my best as a speaker. And uh, therefore, there was, at times comes when you have... Uh, because uh, you, you see him, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's finishing his term. He, he's, he will not be on the ballot. So it's, uh, it's also different. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Just respectively told him that uh, that was the position and that's what is over there. His Excellency the President has visited my rural home mm -hmm. during my during my homecoming, 17th May 20, 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was the only governor in the Republic where the President visited and planted a tree mm -hmm. in my home. That tells you how deep our relationship exactly. is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then also, of course, when I lost as a governor, mm -hmm. he, he, he gave me... He, 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 he proposed my name for speaker, uh, and also it's also true that the deputy president was uh, uh, is a good friend of mine, and is the one, in fact, who really convinced me to wind up. The, I had a very long conversation with him in uh, before winding up my new Fort Kenya party. Uh, so we have also had uh, a good good working relationship. We campaigned together. In fact, I remember we used to be most of the times used to be the same chopper with the deputy president and we used to be even in the same vehicle when we were campaigning for Jubilee in 2017. So they are all my friends. It's just unfortunate that when whatever this rift started coming, it put some of us in a very awkward position because now operating became a bit tricky and difficult. Yeah. The handshake was important to bring members down in this country. It was important, it was critical, and everybody agreed. And it was an act of statesmanship that that did happen. But now, you see, what I don't know uh, how, to what extent the handshake was to go. That, 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 that's, now, <laughs> that's now beyond me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as far as uh, just saying now, let us put our tools down mm -hmm. for the sake of this country. Kenya is more important than the two of us. Yes. That was an act of statesmanship, and everybody saw. I I benefited as a speaker because temperatures just came down in the, even in the house, mm -hmm. and the business has gone on gone on so well. So what happened along the way? That is meant to happen, but I think at that point it was good. And under what circumstances can you work with the Honorable Raila Odinga? Mr. Borrella is, is a good friend of mine. We have, uh, we have, by the way, we support the same team, uh, Arsenal. He has worked football in my house. I have been to his house. Uh, we have talked and uh, I have no difficulty uh, working with him at all. In any case, I worked with him when I was a PS, when he was a Prime Minister. And he, he knows me very well, he also knows my capacity, he knows my, my following in, in, in the moment. So. It's not, it's not as strange. It's just that uh, um, sometimes, you know, uh, somebody said everybody for himself, God for us all. <laughs> uh, uh, does Neo Camp uh, be their candidate? Because the truth also is that uh, if you look at all the ratings in, uh, in Ubungoma, I've been rating very high. And therefore, um, I would say, okay, politics change, but I would say, as things stand now, I'm a popular candidate. And that was a popular candidate, and therefore, both sides wanted to have a, a, a strong candidate to, to win the seat. Uh, but again, another challenge was that already the the, 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 the current governor had already gone to to uh, to Azimio, to be a P Kenya. So going there, you know, I was not very sure that it would not be a trap to go there. Then uh, when 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 at a point of no return, 
you are you are locked out and you've seen what has happened to uh, countries who went to DAP Kenya like uh, Janet Nangapo in Transoya who has now is hanging now she's very desperate she's going to be independent and therefore I wanted to be in a place where I will be sure that I will be on the ballot. It's not, uh, I think, from on my part, I'm a very genuine person. And uh, I don't play with cards under the table. I always put all my cards on the table. I don't scheme anything against anybody. So when, once I made that choice, if that was it, uh, I thought I would, uh, would work because it's not a marriage of convenience. 2013, when I won as a governor, I was very magnanimous. I called the senator who was in another party who had fought me and told him to at least share cabinet. I, I mean, the the, 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 the the responsibility of choosing the cabinet is actually so the government. But I called him and he gave me five names. So I gave him actually half the cabinet and we were not in the same political party. That shows you uh, what I am and how my heart is. Once. If you are given an opportunity to advise the president on his choice, who would you have advised him to support? No, that's a very difficult truth. <laughs> he knows, you know, he, he, I, uh, the president, is, you know, is, uh, he knows all of us. Mm. And he knows he's the president of the country. He has, you know, the, the greatest consumer of all the intelligence in the, in the republic is the president. He knows what Osaka is. He knows what I do at night. He knows what I do during the day. He knows how I operate. So. Whatever informs his decisions, I believe that uh, he is also a wise person in his own way. That's why Kenyans have entrusted him to lead us for 10 years. So I think he knows why he made that, that particular position. I cannot pretend to say I can advise him. If I was his advisor, I would have advised him, of course, if I was there. But now that I'm not his uh, advisor, I don't think, I think we leave it at that, at, at, at that level. There's a perception that you and uh the Fort Kenya Party leader, uh, not the eye to eye. Uh, how did you come to rejoin the party? Or this was just a perception? Uh, of course, we differed. We had, we had, uh, we belonged to different political persuasions. Uh, remember, in 2013, uh, they really wanted me to join Fort Kenya then, but then I realized maybe I'm not going to to make it to survive there. I, I didn't. I did not see good opportunities. So I went to New Ford Kenya. They were in Ford Kenya. I won the election as the first governor. Uh, in 2017, again, I was in Jubilee. He was in Ford Kenya and they, he fought me so hard on the ground. Uh, but my having worked with the, my senator, the, in, uh, the Senate for the last four or five years, made us uh, understand each other better. And uh, I also said the burden of unforgiveness is so is so heavy. I cannot just continue carrying. In any case, we cannot undo what happened. And I uh, realized we both realized that uh, we can serve our people of Bungoma better when we are together, when we are united. Because both of us uh, have very strong personalities, and people believe in us. I have served as a governor. He has served as a senator. He has also been a member of parliament for a long time. He's a national figure. I've also been a national figure and would serve our people better. That's why we decided to bury the hatches and just uh, uh, move on. Try and convince me to go the other side. But again, uh, like I said, politics is local. Uh, I suffered in 2017 because, you know, I was the first one to run on Jubilee. And there, you know, it, there was NASA. Then and Wetangula was a place in NASA. So I was swimming against the current. And, you know, when you swim against the current, use a lot of time and energy. So this time I said, uh, having looked at the, the formations in Bungoma now, uh, and I did explain even when I had a conversation with the head of state and those who are uh, talking to me, that out of, out of uh, nine members of parliament, seven are in UDA. So that means there's a lot of influence, and these are not the members of parliament. Who are weak. You are talking about people like Lidmas Baraza, you are talking about Dan Wanyama, talking about Kapondi in Mount Elgon, and I understand that Pogoma is also a formation we have, Mount Elgon, who are subots, and therefore naturally would support uh, the deputy president. So um, that choice was informed by what is also obtaining on the ground, and uh, therefore I respectfully told them that 
it would be better for me uh, to go because I want nobody goes to an election to fail. Yeah. You go there to win, and I said, let me go uh, to, on a party or a, a coalition that is popular on the ground. So the second oldest political party in Kenya after Kanu. And therefore, it's a party that resonates with the people of Bungoma. It's very easy to, to, to deal with the Ford Kenya, and therefore I wanted a vehicle that would be easy, I mean I would use easily to get to where I wanted to go. EO1, DC2, DC1, senior DC. Uh, then I became the first secretary provincial administration in the Republic of Kenya. I became a permanent secretary in the Muslim Livestock. I went as a governor, uh, first governor of Bukoma. I am the third speaker of the Senate of the Republic of Kenya, the first one, of course, speaker from, from, from that particular region. That experience uh, is not with very many Kenyans. I can tell you, it's a, it's a good, it's a rich experience. I think uh, Kenyans have invested in me, and if, uh, if I get an opportunity, I would not want to, and every politician has ambition. And, uh, uh, in, 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 in the military or in, 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 in a fight, uh, when you retreat, when you take a tactical retreat, it's not running away. But in our places, when a ship, is, uh, a ship goes backward, it's not running away. It's just preparing now to come forward. So, uh, all politicians have ambition, but again, <coughs> we may have ambition, but God may have something else. So, we leave it all to God. Documents. I don't have any fears. I don't think there is anything that I have done that would warrant that kind of thing. But if it comes, again, Kenyans are there to judge. Kenyans are there to know. Courts are there. You mean you, you cannot you cannot just be arrested today and imprisoned. The whole due process will have to be followed, and uh, uh, people will see and they will scrutinize and, and understand what 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 that would be. There is this matter that's, that has been mentioned several in the social media, not actually in serious fora, but the social media. The issue of the non carcinogenic uh, wheelbarrows that were purchased during your uh, tenure. Mm -hmm. uh, how, did this, uh, how did it happen and how has it been solved? You see, well, first of all, <laughs> no money was lost in that thing. Number two, it is me who ordered for an audit of how the departments were performing. When I discovered when I discovered that uh, a wheelbarrow, some wheelbarrows had been purchased at 109, I wanted to find out what it was, and I, indeed they came to explain to me, and I discovered it was not it was not an ordinary wheelbarrow because ordinary wheelbarrows had been bought. Who does not know the the cost of a wheelbarrow is five thousand, four thousand? We were putting up an international slaughterhouse, which I started when I was a permanent secretary in the midst of livestock development. And I still want to repeat, you know, because the truth remains the truth. For you to export any, any dairy, uh, any, say, any beef, poultry, or, or any animal product, you must use materials that are non-carcinogenic because then you, 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 you protect people against cancer. If you, if, if, if you have used, say, maybe the only unfortunate is they said it was a wheelbarrow, maybe they should have said it was a food trolley. And in fact, that recommendation came from the ministry of the quarters, they're you not know, saying, uh, recommending that you should buy the wheelbarrow, should be the material used for that wheelbarrow should be non carcinogenic so that then you can export that chicken to Uganda, Rwanda, or any other country. Otherwise, you can't. That's why you see even the, the, the cans that they use to transport milk, it's used, I mean, you, they use aluminium, aluminium materials, and it's very expensive. What? The question I was asking people, how come the people who quoted, the, the lowest was one, 109, there was 130. Another one was 140 something. How come nobody quoted 3,000? That means the specifications that were given were clear on what they were looking for, and that's why uh, the, the cost was was that. In any case, the matter went, even went to court, and the people were acquitted, and they, they, it went to court because <coughs> of the process, not that money was 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 lost in, in, in that particular. I, that was pure uh, propaganda. Then the, the the politics that was playing the day. Uh, I remember some of my friends now who are on the other side are the ones who trumped up, uh, who, who, who traumatized it to do or what I need to do as a speaker is to check that the procedure has been followed. What guides me as a speaker in that house are the standing orders and the constitution. So once they bring and uh, they, they have fulfilled all the, all the, the requirements, 
of the party as Jubilee Party. I cannot now start saying, no, I cannot approve this. That, that's not my work. Mm -hmm. My work is to communicate the decision of the, 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 the political party. And even other political parties also did the same. When they brought, uh, when Wetangula was removed mm. uh, by NASA yes. and replaced by Orengo, mm. remember I did the same. I just communicated. Mm. I looked at the. In fact, you remember I suspended action when Wetangula was being removed because the replacement procedure had not been followed for the replacement uh, by Orengo until the next day when they followed procedure. So, for me, it is not. It was nothing that it was me to convey that decision about my friends. I, just like a hangman. When you are a hangman and somebody is supposed to be hanged, you, know, you, you just hang. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. Or you must a judge. Yeah. Uh, if uh, the matter is before you and you check and the facts are there, you, you give the judge. So trying to ensure that everybody gets justice. Everybody is fairly handled. So if somebody comes up with judges that don't have any merit. The only inconvenience is, you know, maybe being taken, attracted to court or not taking long, and the humiliation you will undergo. But eventually, the truth shall set one free. Because the truth, the truth will come out. And I don't think that that's a direction we should, we should go as a country.